in this video i'm going to be making a table that goes with the chair both are from plans that are available on my website if you're interested in building the set those are available there's a link in the description it's a pedestal table so it has feet that sit on the deck and then there's a central column that goes up that supports the top First thing I need to do is cut this to 30 inches long, and that's the full leg segment, you could say. And then I need two pieces that are 14 and a quarter inches long, and they make up the half leg segment. Now to dress up the legs, make them look better, I'm going to cut a taper on the ends of each one, and that goes from two inches thick at the end, up to three and a half, ten inches in. And I'm going to cut those on a table saw with the tapering jig. Of course, those tapers don't have to be perfect. You can cut them freehand with a hand saw or even with a circular saw. It's just I've got the tapering jig. I might as well use it. I've got one other thing I need to do with these legs before they're done. And again, it's purely decorative and that's to clip off the corners at a 45 degree angle. Now that I've got the leg parts cut I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. I've got the full leg here on the bottom. I've got a half leg. I'm gonna use that to line up where the legs need to join. Draw a line across. So I'll get some glue on that and drive a couple of two and a half inch screws from the other side. I can do the same with the other one, except I need to drive the screws in at an angle beside the leg that I already attached. To beef this up a little bit, I'm going to add this strap along the bottom here. This is galvanized steel, so it won't rust. I'm going to squeeze on a little bit of glue and then drive in a couple of screws. Now that I've got the leg set assembled, I can work on the pedestal itself. I need four pieces of 2x4 that are 22 inches long, and I'll cut those on a miter saw. And then the cleats that join them to the leg set and to the top are 28 inches long, except I need to rip those down to one and a half inches square. All right, now I can start assembly on the pedestal itself. I've got one of the cleats here, and I've got one of the uh, legs, I guess you could call it. And I'm gonna glue and screw that right onto the edge. And I need for it to stick down three and a half inches below the leg. So I've got a block put there to line it up with. Okay, that's one done. I just need to do that four more times for each of the four segments here. And then I can assemble it to the base, again with glue and screws. All right, that much assembled. I got one more thing that I need to do with the legs on the bottom, and that's to add these blocks that go on the end here. It's going to get some glue on there, a liberal amount, and then I'm going to drive a two inch screw right in the middle to fasten it in place. I want to make sure that I drill a pilot hole first so that this block doesn't split. Okay, what those uh, feet do, I guess you could say, is they keep the base up off the ground or the deck, wherever, so water can drain away. Also, it helps to level it. You can actually plane this down to make it sit more flat on your deck or patio or wherever you're going to put it. The next parts that I need to make are for the top, and they're very similar to the base in that they're an X shape, 
and I've got one longer one and two shorter ones. The longer one is 33 inches long and I'll cut that off at the miter saw. And then the shorter ones are 15 and three quarters. And once again, these are tapered like the bottom ones are, except this time I'll cut them with the circular saw just to show that it's easy enough to do it that way. This goes together exactly the same way as the base with glue and screws. Okay, I've got the base put on the ground and here's the top goes on like that. What I want to do now is take it out again and get some glue in there and then I can drive the screws in that will secure it in place. The rim for the top is eight pieces that are 15 inches long. First thing I need to do is cut these shorter two by fours down to the correct size. And then I need to cut a rabbit that will receive the boards for the top. And I'll do that in two passes on the table saw. After I cut the rabbit, I set the saw to 45 degrees and I cut a chamfer into the outside here. Once again, this is more or less just to make it look better. It's not necessary. Uh, next thing I need to do is to cut these out into segments that are 15 inches long. And the angle cut on the end is 22 and a half degrees because the top has eight sides like an octagon. Now, I've only cut out four of these to begin with. What I want to do next is actually attach those to the top here. I've made a mark right in the middle of each piece so it lines up with the mark that I made on the end here. And what I'll do is I'll drive one screw in just to secure it. I won't use any glue yet. And then I'm going to take measurements all the way around for the remaining pieces and that way I can come up with one that's exactly the right size that will complete that octagon. All right, I did all the measuring and I determined that the correct length for the rest of them is gonna be 14 and 7 eighths. So I'll mark this first one and cut out all the rest. All right, I got these all cut. It looks like they fit in there properly. Next thing I need to do is take off the ones I put on already and get some glue in that joint and then put them back on again. I think this is the easiest way to join these. Just holding it in line, I'm gonna drill a pile hole and then drive a screw in. I haven't driven these all the way in yet. I'm just using this to line it up for now. What I'm going to do next is take the screw back out a ways, get some glue in the joint, and then drive it in fully, making sure that the joint stays lined up. And of course I'm doing it this way because this is a good practical approach and this is just a piece of lawn furniture. But if you want to get fancy with it, you can use dowels or special clips that go on the back or whatever other way will work for you. Uh, this is going to work fine for me. Glass on the fasten. I'll check it first. And it's close but it needs to be adjusted to fit in there which is always good and the worst thing that could happen is you get to this last one here and it's too short 
and you have to cut a new one and especially if you don't have any stock so what I'll do is I'll just trim an eighth of an inch off of that and see how that fits basically I'll be sneaking up on the cut until I get it perfect okay that looks really good right there now that I've got the rim finished and I'm happy with that I can start putting the boards on the top and this is basically just cut to fit where they go uh, there's one important thing to do here though and that's with the first board where it goes it goes right in the middle here and it uh, bridges these two supports here these are the ones that are not continuous they're in two pieces whereas this one goes straight through having the board on top like this will add a lot of strength to the construction so just like everything else, I'm going to glue and screw these in place. So like I said, you basically cut these to fit. What I'm doing is I'm cutting them to length and then I'm going to mark the angle on the end here. I'm going to put these in so they're tight against each other. I know eventually they'll shrink up a little bit and create a gap in between. But I want to minimize that gap as much as possible. Okay, all done. Um, as for finish, I'm not going to finish it actually. I went with the cedar because it's naturally uh, rot resistant. It'll turn a gray color over time. It's a look that I kind of like. So I'm just going to leave this as it is and let it just age naturally. And you know what? If I get 10, 15 years out of it, I think that's a pretty good deal. 